We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three, listen. Welcome to Finances, your home for all things financial, investment, money, and lifestyle. Hosted and curated by the very talented team of certified financial planners and Burke Britain Financial Partners. This is the Finances Podcast. So I've got a couple of guests today. We're doing a little bit differently, doing it virtually today when we've previously done it in person. Uh, We've got a couple of the team members from Aspire Lawyers. Uh, For those of you that have listened to previous podcasts, you would have heard Sarah, Claudia and Jessica on, I think, episode number 42. Today, we've got Nikita Chikoa and uh, Alice Groudon uh, joining us from the commercial and property teams at Aspire. So Nikita and Alice, thanks for joining me virtually today on the Finances Podcast. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Jay. Thanks for having us. Uh, no, absolute pleasure. I said just before we started recording, Nikita, that it's uh, it's great to actually put a few more faces to names and we've started to have a, a fair bit to do with uh, your team over the course of the last probably six months. And I think it's, it's really exciting to get to know uh, businesses that have a a similar ethos uh, of sort of personal and professional development and also a want to continue to improve the services that they're offering to their clients. So the way our podcasts work is that I, even though we're going to talk a little bit about commercial and property law, also like to know a little bit about the people we're talking to. So um, what I'd like to do to begin with is maybe start with a little bit of background and feel free to go back as far as you you wish to on where you were born, your history, and what brought you to aspire in the role that you've got today. So I might start with you, Nikita, if that's okay. Tell us a little yeah. bit about where, where you were born, where you grew up, and uh, how you ended up where you are today yeah. uh, as a yeah. as a commercial lawyer with Aspire. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, so I, I was born in Brisbane, lived in Brisbane for about 10 years before we moved to Melbourne. We, My dad's got quite a large family, so he's one of nine siblings. Most of his brothers live in Melbourne, which brought us to move over to Melbourne. So I was very fortunate to grow up with lots and lots of cousins, which made that really nice. And Christmas is always a big, big occasion for us. So moved to Melbourne, lived in Melbourne for most of my life and um, went to school, did uni. I did a Bachelor of Social Science majoring in psychology to start with. Um, really enjoyed it, but I think I was probably just a little bit too young to know what I wanted to do with my life, where I wanted to go. I'm sure a lot of people can resonate with that. And then, yeah, after doing some self-searching and really working out what I wanted to do, I realised that law was probably the right place for me. And, yeah, so went into law, didn't know where I wanted to go with it and what I wanted to actually working, learned a little bit about myself and where I was like, what I was passionate about. I actually started working with Kalia Pierce. So this is Aspire back a few back a few years. So it was originally called Kalia Pierce. So I started working with them on reception in my first year of law and did that for about three months before I moved into the commercial team as a paralegal. So I did that for probably about four years before I was admitted as a lawyer. I guess I had, it came with a lot of benefits for me because obviously I'd learned a lot in that time whilst I was studying as well as working. I worked um, a lot with Shane, who's um, our principal of the firm. So a lot of matters, I got a lot of experience, which has really been good for my career growth and really solidified where I wanted to be in the commercial space. So did that, became a lawyer. Um, I was admitted in 2020. And yeah, since then, just been practicing as a solicitor. I've actually recently moved over to Perth with my husband and my daughter. And yeah, we've just set up in Perth. We've built a house and yeah, yeah, looking to continue our success in Perth, I think, in the commercial team. How did you find the move to Perth, uh, particularly given that you've left a big uh, extended family network over here in Melbourne? How have you found that transition over to Perth, for, uh, not only professionally, but from a personal point of view? Yeah, look, it's definitely not easy, you know, leaving all, everything that you know behind your family, your friends, especially when you come from such a tight-knit family. Fortunate that we've got enough space for people to come back and forth 
and for us to go back and forth as well, which is really benef- beneficial. But yeah, definitely not easy, but we've had a lot of, um, we've had my parents over recently. We're expecting my, my husband's parents soon. We've got friends coming and going. We'd actually recently had Alice. Alice was in Perth last week. So yeah, it's been really nice to have lots of people coming and going, but I have to admit Perth is a really beautiful place. I mean, we're in winter and it's currently 22 degrees outside. So it's not a bad, it's not a bad place to live. So we're really enjoying that part of it. So Alice, did you get uh, tempted to make the transition to Perth after that little visit a couple of weeks ago? Definitely. Well, I was there for three nights last week and I was with Shane, our principal, and I was telling him on the plane, like, it looks like there's an opportunity in Perth. And we've actually done a bit of networking while we were there, getting some, you know, good, good networks that can refer us good clients and ones that we can work together with and share the same sort of values as Aspire. So yeah, I, I was very jealous of the weather and like you wake up and it's blue sky, sun's out, went for a run every morning. I'm not motivated to go for a run in Melbourne. All of a sudden my my whole mindset's changed about my health when I'm in Perth. So yeah, I definitely am jealous. And if I had it my way, I would definitely be looking at moving across to the West Coast at some stage in the future. Now, now you were actually, you're sort of, you're born halfway, is that right? So between Melbourne and uh, and Perth, there's a place called Adelaide in the middle, I believe, that that's where you were, you grew up, or, or at least uh, you were born there and then moved to Melbourne a little bit later. Is that right? Yeah. So my parents, my mum migrated from Vietnam when she was about 17. So she learned English from scratch and did her schooling in Adelaide. And then she met my dad in university and she wasn't actually interested in my dad at the time. My dad's dad, my grandpa at the time, now um, ran an accounting firm and my mum was studying accounting and she saw dad as a really good gateway to get some work experience. They hit it off and eventually they got together and she finished her accounting degree. Dad also did accounting and auditing and they decided to open up a business. And I think there was a bit more opportunity in Melbourne at the time. So they decided to bring um, all of us over when I was about six or seven. So I was quite young. So I feel like I've grown up and done schooling through Melbourne, but my heart sort of lies in Adelaide and I'm back there two or three times a year to visit my grandparents and uh, my aunties and cousins because my dad's side of the family are all there. But yeah, I'm definitely, uh, I love the the calmness of Adelaide and Perth reminds me a lot of Adelaide. You've got that nice weather. Everyone sort of stops and says, hello, how's your day? Whereas in Melbourne, it's very go, go, go. And no one wants to sort of stop and be interrupted in their day. So um, yeah, I do think that eventually I'll end up either in Adelaide or Queensland or, or Perth. But right now I'm, I'm quite situated in Melbourne. I just built a brand new house and moved in and locked myself kind of here for, for the next three or four years at least. And my partner, he's a bricklayer and he runs his own crew here. But then Nikita's saying there's a big growth in uh, in building and construction and subdividing and developments in Perth. So I'm like, oh, maybe there's opportunity for you there as well. So maybe our world's I'm more at all. <laughs> yeah. So go back to your transition over from Adelaide to Melbourne, and this is probably a, you touched on it, Nikita, but for yourself, Alice, what was the impetus for you to move into law? Where was that decision made for you to enter into the legal fraternity? Uh, was it always something you wanted to do, or did it did you fall there by sort of happenstance? Well, my parents are accountants and they dealt with lawyers quite a bit. So I kind of got an idea of what, I guess, the industry was like. And I I met a lot of accountants along the way. I've got a family member who's also a lawyer. I didn't know what I wanted to do throughout schooling. I did my primary school and secondary school, just kind of open-minded. My mom really wanted me to do medicine and getting to get into the health industry. And she's very traditional. I like keep your maths and sciences in your subjects for VCE. And I just absolutely hated those types of subjects. I actually did year 10 work experience at Sunshine Hospital and I was in the radiology department and they did this very minor procedure where they were, I think, cutting out a skin cancer or something or other. And I fainted, vomited and was sent home straight away. And I was like, mom, I can't do that ever again. Scared me away from that type of work. And then my younger sister ended up doing medicine anyway. So I'm like, you know, you've got your daughter, you've got your wish. So I might move on and do something else. Um, So when I finished my BC, I was just sort of keeping my options open. It was either like TV journalism or law or commerce or a combination of the two. So I ended up getting a Bachelor of Law and Commerce Applied Finance. And I thought, let's just see where this goes. I'll get a really good idea of 
whether I want to stay in the commerce field or law de- uh, field after a couple of years of uni and I guess just like bite the bullet and see how it went and I got a scholarship as well so it was like if, it, if you get paid to study why not like um, rather than take a gap year and things like that so did the law degree and commerce degree realized very quickly that I didn't like numbers and the commerce maths <laughs> finance subjects really triggered me to not enjoy those types of um, subjects so I ended up picking the law degree more so than the commerce I completed both obviously but I did lots of internships and um, I I got like lots of experience through different industries and avenues of the law, like working in the state trustees. I was working at a couple of law firms during the time. I worked at um, Melbourne Uni at one stage doing Aboriginal treaties and native title. Um, So I got a really good idea about all the different areas of the law throughout uni. And then I decided I wanted to work in private practice and got a job out as a graduate lawyer at a small firm working in family law, criminal law, wills and estates, commercial law, um, litigation and ad hoc like IVOs, um, disputes and debt collection and things like that. So the generalist role really helped me understand what I liked and didn't, didn't like. And that led me to, I ended up going traveling for a little bit. So I decided let's just, you know, take a break because I felt like I went from school and did five years did my PLT at the same time as my final semester of a full-time law and commerce load plus my thesis. And that was during COVID while working a part-time job as a paralegal. And I was absolutely exhausted after that semester and do not recommend cramming everything in like that, but it got me through the door and I graduated, got admitted by the age of 23. So uh, I don't know why I put it into my head that the quicker the better, but I don't think that's the case. Um, if I look back, I wish I took my time a little bit more. Where did you travel to, Alice, when you took, how long did you take and where did you travel to? Um, I took three months off um, and I went to Thailand, Vietnam, um, Singapore, Europe, um, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, so I did Switzerland and Europe, UK, um, Amsterdam, and I've done Austria as well. And we grew up doing lots of snowboarding and skiing. So I like to chase the winter. So I went skiing in Switzerland, skiing in Austria, more snowboarding, but we call it skiing, I guess. And then I was in Japan as well at, at one stage skiing, and it was the best time of my life. Like I, I really needed that time to really get to know who I am and take a break from reality. And um, I came back feeling really refreshed and decided, I think, commercial litigation or sort of in the scope of having the broad um, business development and, and also having the scope of my parents and the work that they do, that commercial law was more something that I enjoyed more, I suppose. And, and the client work was less emotional. And I think if you compare it to family law, it's, you know, apples and pears. And family law, I, I struggled to really disconnect from the work when I got home. Like I was always thinking about what was going on. There were always children involved. And I've always been, I've always loved kids. And I felt like when I came across, you know, really nasty things that had been done to the children and where they weren't the center of the matter, I, I really struggled to apprehend that and, and come home and really release and, you know, detach from my work. So commercial law is really nice in between, I guess. Um, and we do get um, exposed sometimes to family law issues and we do work together with the Wills and Estates team and family law. So it doesn't mean we're completely accustomed just to co- commercial law. So yeah, it's a really good setup at Aspire. But funny story, like I went from working in a, so I worked at a private firm for a bit and then I went to an in-house role at Mercedes-Benz Finance. So did all the debt recovery work for contracts uh, and loans that were defaulted. And a lot of the time there was money laundering, drug money, police investigations involved. And it was a very James Bond experience. And I felt like it was a great adrenaline rush and got a lot of kick out of it. But I think long-term, it was not something I could sustain and come home and enjoy and you know be able to di- disconnect as well. So I went there for a couple of months and decided that's not for me. And at that stage, I was like even thinking of doing a master's of teaching, like, is the law really for me? Like, I, I didn't know if I fit in. I didn't feel that I could comfortably, you know, approach people and be confident in the fact that I'm a lawyer. Like you always doubt yourself and, you know, it's a big name to sort of live up to. And there's a stigma that you've got to be really prim and proper and formal all the time. And I felt like maybe that's just not my personality. So I, I gave it another shot, had a couple of interviews here and there, and then Aspire came along and Aspire were just like, I could tell they were different from the start. There were there was just this um, vibe that it wasn't about what you know, it was about who you are, um, what you value, what do you want to do when you in the next five, 10 years. Like they actually seem to to care about those types of things. Whereas uh, the traditional firms that I came from were very much, you know, earn money for us or, or go, go out the door. <laughs> so yeah, that's what led me here. And I guess fun facts about me. I ride a motorbike as my means of transport. Um, because Melbourne traffic's so bad and motorbike riding's funner, more fun than um, driving. And I 
play a lot of netball. I used to play football, women's, and then I do snowboarding in the winter. So quite active. <laughs> you, you definitely sound quite active. It's interesting when you were talking about um, when you arrive, arrived at Aspire, because I, I wanted to touch on sort of what, before we get into the services around sort of commercial and property law, I think one of the important things for people, for listeners to understand is the the point of difference culturally that that Aspire has. It's certainly something that in dealing with you for the last six months or 12 months, we've noticed there is a significant difference culturally in the way Aspire operate, uh, not only with their, their people, but this focus around uh, personal and professional development that I spoke about earlier. Maybe Nikita, if, if you want to touch on, and I know like neither of you have had massive tenures with Aspire, but just from your own experience, um, having joined the team, what is it that sets Aspire apart uh, culturally and also in the way that they look to develop their individual human beings in the practice? So question for you, Nikita. Yeah, look, Aspire is completely different from the traditional law firm. For example, we work from home majority of the time. When I first said to Shane, I'm moving to Perth, it wasn't, oh, okay. It was a matter of, all right, how do we make this work? You can go anywhere in the world if you want to. He's like, I don't care if you're working on the beach for half the day, as long as you're getting your work done and things are happening. So that was when that happened, you can imagine I would have been so scared about the thought of what was I going to do? Where was I going to go? Is the spy going to be okay with that change? But they were so encouraging and welcoming of that. That's, I think that's an example um, of the culture. But in general, I think in terms of our clients, like we, we genuinely care. We're invested in seeing how our clients grow because the success of our clients, to me, reflects back on what we've done and our job. And if we can support our clients and be with them on that journey, we will create that partnership for life. And that's what we're, that's what for me is where my passion comes from with the law. But in how, in terms of how we work internally, um, like, as you know, we recently hired Alice a few months ago and the thought process of hiring Alice was never, okay, which of the candidates has the most experience who is going to come in as, you know, this amazing lawyer and just dominate. That was not our thought process at all. It was really who is going to be the right fit for us, who has the right attitude, who in, um, encompasses our values and really lives them. That was our thought process because in my mind, I feel like you can train anyone to do anything. You can train someone who to be an amazing lawyer. Not saying that Alice isn't. She is an incredible lawyer. We struck gold with Alice. But it's really hard to find the right people. And so having Alice come into the mix has been so good for our team and for the growth of our team. Just attitude, culture, everything is what drives a lot of our decision-making internally. So it was really nice to be able to go through the hiring process with Alice, knowing that she's going to be the right fit. And I think we were, like, we were really on the money with that. Alice, you've just... Uh, Nikita's giving you a fair pump up there, uh, <laughs> fair, put you on a, a decent sort of a pedestal. From from your perspective, did you know much about Aspire before you interviewed with them? And if so, tell us about what you knew and how did that differ from what you actually saw in reality? So what was what was attractive to you as uh, as someone that was coming as a new member to this this team? Yeah, well, like they had a really big corner office on Watton Street in Werribee and I drove past that quite a bit when I went to footy training in Manor Lakes um, every Thursday night. So I'd seen it around and I'd seen the name and there was a bit of social media buzz about Aspire, but I had no idea that they were super different to your traditional firm and I had no idea what the values are and things like that. Obviously did my research about the firm before I got the interview, but when I got the interview, like I was blown away, like we did a personality test to get an idea about exactly how I would react in certain situations, whether I'm able to take on work without being stressed and the sort of traits that I would have and how the, how I would fit into the team and whether it would be compatible, I guess, to the other people in the team. So it was a very different approach. And that sort of told me straight away that this is a different type of firm. There was even on, on the job description in Seek, there was a video 
of Aspire, like a potential employer working on the beach and like having a really good time. And it was all about like the, the employer being, the employee being really happy in the job. And I was like, oh, that's like not, not your usual, like usually, usually get recruited for a lawyer role and you're just there to pump out work and do your eight billable hours per day and make at least 30 grand a week for the firm. And there's a lot of pressure around that. And if you don't reach it and, you know, if you don't do a certain thing that's within the job description, like your job's on the line straight away. Whereas at Aspire, like you, you can speak up, you can voice your opinion. If you think something's not necessarily the right way of doing something, or there might be a better method to the madness than bringing that up and being able to be vocal and, and understanding with the team about it is like absolutely um, a praise rather than negative. And I think like, it's not just being a lawyer at Aspire. Like we run our own teams entirely. Like Nikita does an amazing job of leading the commercial team and She's got a really good understanding of the financial expenses per month. And we go through the budgeting every at the start of each month. Like we don't have, you know, certain people who do the financing controlling entirely. And then the lawyers just do the work themselves. Like we, we're completely in it and we know what reward we'll get in, in the long run if we perform well and things like that. So there's a lot of personal growth. And one of the things that I thought I mistakenly said during the interview was, you know, in five years time, I want to, I want to open up my own business. I want to run my own empire. I've always wanted to do that. And I was like, oh crap, they're going to think she's temporary. She's only a two year deal. <laughs> this isn't worth going down the line. But Shane said to me on the plane when we were in um, Perth, that that's what won you the, the ticket to aspire. So like they see personal traits and, and what you want to do in the future as opportunity, like Nikita moving to Perth, that's an opportunity to create a client base there, create an office there and, you know, make Aspire, work around the employ employees and make, make everyone happy, but also run the business well in, in return. And I think like if you're treated well, which we are very, we're treated super well at um, Aspire, in, in return, we get reward and that is like trust and we can move into different things. And if we want to take on leadership roles or like do extra work in different areas and we're allowed to. So it's very different, not your traditional firm. We do fixed billing entirely. I don't have to worry about six minute increments like learning about financials, reading, interpreting them, making decisions about what's best for the team based on, you know, the financial performance. And then just being able to grow like professionally and individually. Like I, I know more than enough now from just the three months that I've been at Aspire to know what it takes to run sort of a business. And like, even just knowing what the expenses are just for the commercial team is super like valuable. Like what like, you go into the workforce and you want to open up a, a business, like you start from scratch. And if you've only been a lawyer, that's all, you know, you know how to do the work, but you don't know how to run a business. So that skill comes from being at Aspire, but it's like so foreign in this type of industry to have that. And not only that, like when we, when we meet clients, it's not about, okay, what work do you need done? When's the turnaround? And like, here's the transactional price. This is what we're going to quote you. It's all about, you know, who are you? What are you trying to achieve? What business do you run? Where do you fit in in society? And how can we help you not only in, in the transaction that you're seeking to, to grow and get better and benefit you in the long run? So it's, it's not about time. Like we might spend one or two or three hours working on a client's proposal and getting to know a client before we actually even get them in through the door. And it's because we want to know our clients like properly. We want to fully understand what their objectives are and where they come from and, you know, what their challenges are on the day to day. And we want to make sure that when we approach their matter later on, when they come on board, that we are doing it with, um, you know, with a bit of generosity in the background and also just having a full understanding of the whole picture about where they come from and what they're trying to achieve. So yeah, it's a really different place to work and it changed the game for me. Like I don't think I would have lasted in a traditional law firm. I really think that times are changing, like AI is coming in. We've got different types of technologies. There's lots of like online forums and stuff that you can get legal advice from. It's not the same as what it was. And I think we, we're like here to change the game and disrupt the industry as well. So that's what I love about it. It's different. It's bold. It's a, you're accountable in your job and you're rewarded for it as well. So it's just like, it's enjoyment for me. It's brilliant. And hearing you, the two of you talk so passionately, not only about, well, we haven't even talked about the actual uh, sort of legal aspects of what you do, I think is, is amazing because you know, what I see in Aspire is what we are encouraged to do in, here at Burke Britain. We're actually building leaders. We're actually building people who want to take ownership either physically or just personally taking personal responsibility for their patch of dirt in the business. And, you know, when I hear the two of you talk about everything from your people to your processes, to your financials, and then the clients, you know that you have very well-rounded 
uh, individuals that look at sort of every aspect of what it means to be in business. And I think that's probably one of the things that's lost on a lot of people when they go into a new role is that they're very focused on maybe one particular thing. It might be they're focused on, you know, just being profitable, you know, like billable hours or they're focused on the client, but to the exclusion of, you know, the people that they actually work with. And I think when you actually start to have a bigger picture of that a successful business is made up of, you know, some core elements and you really want everyone to sort of have ownership and responsibility of that. So it's great. And I know we, when we spoke with Sarah and Claudia and Jessica, that same theme, it's not, it's not as though that theme is coming just from one of you. It's coming from all of you. So that culture is certainly very, very strong. It'd be remiss of us to to have you on and not talk about the services that you actually offer. I know you sent through Alice um, a bit of a summary of uh, of the areas, but for those clients that are actually listening uh, to this and they're thinking, listen, how might Aspire, particularly Alice and Nikita, be able to support us? Um, what are the types of things in commercial law and property law that you uh, you work on predominantly? Where where can you help those small business owners or people with their their properties? Where can you help and support them? Well, on our website, a good starting point is a legal health check. And it just asks you a couple of questions about what you do, what your business is, what type of work is involved, you know, who your stakeholders are, what your profit margin is and things like that, and what you're trying to achieve. And then that gives us a good summary about who, who you are as a person and what we might be able to do. And we, we could reach out and, and collaborate and, you know, come up with something that helps you in that sense, if you're not sure about anything at all. But yeah, there is like a lot of different services involved in commercial law. It's not just your typical reviewing contracts or drafting contracts and we just you know type up emails all day it's it's very much it's it's very broad there's lots of different areas within the commercial landscape litigation being one of them like if there's a dispute or trying to exit a business and sell your business or buy a business negotiating the right terms and conditions for you, making sure you're fully protected, doing due diligence before you enter any sort of commercial contract or arrangement, whether it's with your neighbor, whether it's with your business partner, whether it's with your client, you know, there's all these different types of partnerships and and engagements that you could enter throughout your life. And it's really important, I guess, to just get a peace of mind that someone's looked over the, the arrangement and it's in writing and you're protected from a legal perspective and you're able to move forward with that confidence without having to feel like, oh, have I, have I done something wrong? Have I, you know, lost all this money that I've invested into this um, share or something like that. So there's lots of different areas. And I guess like just to name a few, like we can send letters of demand for money that's owed to you from a family member or a client or anything like that. And even like if you're building a house and the builder hasn't handed over the keys by the deadline as per the contract and you've let things slide and you keep waiting and waiting and waiting. At some point, you need to make a decision that it needs to put them on notice. Like you need to get someone to put something in writing to be able to move forward from those types of transactions because ultimately it's affecting your life. Like you're not able to move into your house. You're not able to start seeing the reaps, the benefits of um, the mortgage that you're paying on, on the repayments and things like that. So getting a lawyer involved at that stage is a really good idea just to get some peace of mind. And it also gives a third party perspective on the situation and we give you advice about the situation. And we're also able to... um you know, correspond with the the builder or whoever the debtor is um, on your behalf rather than you having to confront those types of confronting conversations. We also draft and review leases, landlord-tenant disputes, franchising, drafting franchise agreements, drafting lease agreements, reviewing all of those types of things, buying, selling businesses throughout the whole process of facilitating what's necessary in order for you to put your go into the shoes of directing that business. Property law advice, reviewing co- contracts of sales, Section 32, giving you advice about what the, the risks are, I guess, if you do move forward in the transaction, trademark registrations, gift and loan buybacks bankruptcy advice, judgment, going to court about any sort of litigious matter, whether it's, you know, a business dispute or a family member has demanded a certain amount of money and you don't agree with it or things like that. So any sort of situation that comes to your mind that could be a commercial dispute, we would be able to handle. And I guess like, it's not limited to just like a list of services that we do. Like we always are willing to listen to what the situation is and we might not have done it before but like at Aspire we're all about learning about the job and learning new things and being able to help people where you know other traditional lawyers might not be able to help them so Nikita do you have much to add? (laughs) No I think you've done a great job there I was really only going to add that we find that a lot of clients sometimes come to us when things have 
one of my friends, she hit the fan, she hit the fan and like, you've now come to us and we need to react. But I have to say my favorite type of client that we like, I like to work with is the ones who come to us proactively seeking advice on what they can do. I like to think of it as like building your armor. So if you run a business and you need terms and conditions for your website, doing those things and implementing those things really help you to build your armor so that it protects you. Same with IP, those kinds of things. Like litigation is not where you want to be. It costs a lot of money. It's a lot of stress. And there's plenty that you can do to avoid that. Yeah. So I think that's Alice did a good job in explaining everything that we do, but we're really passionate about trying to build people's armor. We've done a lot of, um, you know, the terms and conditions and contract reviewing. We've done a lot of M&A deals and selling, buying businesses. Yeah. It's, there's, there's a whole lot of things that we can do and we've done, we've done day in, day out. Yeah. I think that idea, Nikita, of being of proactive advice and the, the similarities between what you both have just spoken about and us as financial advisors. I mean, the ideal, it, it's interesting that people tend to seek advice when they have a life event or a significant event. And, uh, you know, not all of those can be understood before they happen, but some of them can. Some of them can be preemptively yeah. addressed. And I think the small business advice is one of those where, you know, if we could encourage anyone out there listening today, if you're planning on, you know, going into business. I mean, we, we I think I spoke with uh, Claudia and Jessica and Sarah about family law and estate planning and how important it is to be ahead of the curve in terms of getting advice preemptively. Same with small business advice as well, you know, having, uh, you know, shareholders agreements and uh, business succession plans in place are just so pivotal because things just aren't a problem until they're a problem. And I love what you said about actually putting some armor and protection on uh, you and your business and surrounding yourself with the right people. I think one of the things that we've tried, and I think it's obvious that that, that you as a business are trying to do as well is to actually make sure that uh, that your clients are surrounded with like-minded professionals. They're surrounded with people that can actually provide complementary advice and support. And the way we have tried to do that is to make sure that those people that can provide, you know, specific advice around, you know, uh, commercial advice, property advice, is there to complement what we do from a financial planning point of view. It's not to detract. And I think we've... I love hearing you talking about the disruption of the industry because I think that disruption of the industry is as much people being less protective of their own patch of dirt and thinking, you know, going in with a very like a famine mindset when it comes to business and thinking that, you know, there's not enough to go around. There's an enormous amount of, of, of business and opportunity to go around if people uh, are willing to support their clients in the right in the right way and actually introduce other positive third-party relationships to uh, to clients. I think it can add just so, so much value. And that's why, again, I, I really love hearing the way you talk passionately about uh, what you do at Aspire and, and the services that you provide. Maybe just to get a little bit granular, you mentioned, Alice, just in relation to how you charge. And I know that on episode 42, we talked about this as a sort of unique sort of point of difference, but maybe uh, I'll leave this open to whoever wants to answer it in terms of like how you charge for what you do. And also maybe you can also touch on, I think the the DIY sort of online documentation that you have the opportunity with Aspire to make use of. So I'll leave that with you to answer however you like. Yeah, sure. So all our pricing is fixed and we're transparent from the start about what our fees are. And I guess like the whole idea of getting to know our clients is really getting an understanding of where the matter might end up, whether there's going to be complications and whether there's, you know, a lot more correspondence than your traditional back and forth negotiation that might be involved. And at that stage, we, Nikita and I, and we'll have a team meeting and um, have an assessment about, you know, how much time might be involved and what the value is to the client of us delivering the service. So 
after we have our initial consultation, so the first, uh, if you do sign up for a consultation, the first 15 minutes is a phone call and that's completely free, no obligation. And that's just a good conversation to get to know what exactly you're seeking. After that, we'll, Nikita and I will have a chat and we'll reach out with a value proposal, which gives you three different packages to choose from. And you might be just seeking to review a contract and have some verbal advice, for example. But we have three packages that support you with the same service, but in three different levels of comprehensiveness. So the first package might be verbal advice, reviewing all the contract, um, the, the negotiations and all the correspondence to date and providing some verbal advice through a, a Zoom a consultation at some stage. And that's priced at a fixed rate, which would be the lowest of the three packages. The second package might be due diligence and doing PPSR searches over the company that you're engaging to go into business with or franchising and also doing further terms and conditions for you to go into that and then also negotiating on your behalf with the other side rather than you having to go and take our advice and do it yourself kind of thing. And then the next package will be a whole inclusive uh, you know, every six months we can do an annual, we can do a six monthly review. How's everything going? Is there any issues? Has any dispute come up from, from the employees that you've taken on board from the last business? Has there been any issues? Have they asked for things that you, you didn't suspect and, how, you know, give, give you some guidance about how to handle those types of situations. And then we can also offer the annual after that. So six months twice. Um, within that package. So yeah, like we, we just want to make sure that the client and a lot of the time the clients get our proposal and they're like, oh, I didn't even realize that I needed this. Like these types of services that are add-ons that are going to help me sound. It's like when you subscribe for PlayStation subscription and you got the gold, bronze and, and the silver, and you think you're just going to subscribe with the, with the bottom one, the bronze, but then you realize, oh, actually I want this game as well. And that's going to make me a lot happier and I feel, feel um, happier with paying the subscription price altogether. So it's, it's similar, similar to that kind of model. And we don't do any time billing whatsoever. So all of the uh, work that is included up until the scope finishes is like completely free phone calls. You've got our direct lines. You've got our direct email addresses. You don't have to go through reception each time or consult with a paralegal or secretary to, in order to get in touch with us. We're completely there to support you from start to finish in that scope. And there's no real um, complication or, or issue with us having to like say, oh, you know, you've already had two phone calls. Like you've only got one more. We don't have to like bring it down to that level of feeling uncomfortable comfortable in the relationship with our client, which a lot of law firms generally do. So it's, it's a very different way of doing things. And it also gives us the flexibility and, and, and the a good background and, and forecast to be able to do the work properly, like rather than thinking that we have to do it in a certain time frame and we've got to focus on other matters that are paying us so much more or things like that. Like it's all about just delivering a good service within its means and doing it over a time that you're free and flexible in order, and, and feel comfortable in order to do so. Yeah. I, I like the, the, the concept of the relationship being the center point of the advice that you provide rather than it being a transaction, if you like. And I know having spoken to a number of lawyers over the course of the last couple of years, all of them to a person would prefer to actually have a model that is because they can see the value in having ongoing relationships with their client rather than just being, you know, uh, super transactional and then never having an ongoing relationship with that client again. So, Again, hats off to you both and to the team at Aspire for really focusing on managing that ongoing relationship with clients. Because one of the things we know is that, you know, client circumstances are so interwoven with other areas of their life, you know, and it's not, if we think transactionally about someone, we're, we're ultimately going to miss a significant part of their uh, the value that we could add to their situation, or there's going to be another rock that we haven't sort of lifted up to have a look under where there's an opportunity for us to add some value. So yeah, again, hats off to you in terms of, uh, in terms of that. Now I thought I might close Nikita with you giving us a bit of a, a snapshot of, of how people can, can find the commercial and property team yourselves at Aspire, or if you've got any other, sort of uh, legal needs, how, where can people find you on the interwebs? How can they get in contact with you? How would you like them to get in contact with you? And then uh, I'll leave you with, uh, leave it to you to, for any closing comments to our, to our listeners. 
Yeah, of course. So you can connect with us on our website, which is aspirelawyers.com.au. We're on all social media. So you'll find us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. You can even email Alice or myself. It's literally just Nikita at aspirelawyers.com.au or Alice at aspirelawyers.com.au or give us a call and um, the receptionist will on the phone call, book in a 15 minute free call with us and we'll have you already scheduled in. So very easy to connect with us. And um, yeah, we look forward to helping in whatever way we can, or even just having a chat with you too. That's fine as well. And I think just to add on to that. So our locations are Melton, which is our head office. We've got Point Cook, which was uh, basically moved from the Werribee one. And then there's Richmond as well. So we have a lot of locations and we're flexible. We also have a Geelong satellite office as well. So we're happy to come out to you if it's too difficult to get to a certain location. And we're also super flexible with um, online appointments, phone appointments, Zooms and things like that. In this day and age, everyone's busy. No one has time to take an hour or two out of the day just to travel and get ready for appointment. We completely understand that. And we we really value flexibility and our clients do as well. So um, yeah, that's where we're located and and if you just want to come in and say hello feel free to do so (laughs) very good well Nikita Alice it's been a pleasure to have the two of you on today as it was to have uh, your other team members on in previous episodes Uh, I'm sure we could do a round two or round three at some point in the future and maybe we can dive into some more technical content or talk about travel or whatever whatever you might like to do. But uh, again, from the team here at Burke Britain, I just want to say thanks for the relationship that we've developed over uh, the last year or so. It's been fantastic. I love seeing uh, what you're doing uh, over at Aspire and the enthusiasm with which you do it. Any final uh, closing comments or call to action to any of our listeners, uh, Nikita, Alice, anything else you want to say before we close this one out? I think just if you're feeling like you you need to encourage yourself and build up the courage to go and speak to a lawyer about something that's going on, like just do it. Like, especially with our 15 minute free consultations, it's a no brainer, get some peace of mind, at least get an idea about what the way forward might be for you from a legal perspective, rather than, you know, lose sleep over it and keep encouraging yourself over a couple of months. And I know lots of people do that. They, they, They think that going to see a lawyer means it's just money out of the pocket getting an idea about what your rights are, where you stand and and what we can do for you is a really good starting point, you know, just to get some peace of mind about something that might be going on in the commercial space in your life. So highly encourage it. And we're super friendly at Aspire. So come on board anytime. Wonderful. Nikita, any closing thoughts? No, I think Alice covered that really well. Um, <laughs> but we're very friendly and I promise we, yeah, we're not going to buy a header off or anything. So thank you so much for having us, Jay. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Jay. And we really value our relationship with Burke Britain as well. And we're really looking forward to taking things forward in the future and definitely lots of podcast episodes to come, I'm sure. For sure. All right. Well, thanks again. And I look forward to speaking to you again on uh, another podcast. Thanks very much. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Jay. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you're keen to understand more about how financial advice could benefit you, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Burke Britain FP or Google Burke Britain Financial Partners. Check out our client reviews, testimonials and make a time to meet one of our certified financial planners by clicking book now on our website. Thanks for listening. Any information contained in this podcast is of a general nature only. No account was taken as to the objectives, financial situation, or needs of any particular person. Therefore, before making any decision, listeners should consider the appropriateness of any information with regard to their particular objective, financial situation, needs, and seek independent advice from a licensed professional specific to their circumstances. All right, hit it. That translates to don't be a moron and act on what some random person says on a podcast. Take personal responsibility, do your homework, ask questions, and speak to an actual human that knows what they're talking about before you do anything. PP Financial Solutions Proprietary Limited Trading is Burke Britain Financial Partners are authorised representatives of AMP Financial Planning Limited AFS license number 232706.